Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we are gonna be making a very decorative wall hook to match this candelier or the chandelier that I have made with Tom Latne during a class, a blacksmithing class I just recently got back from at Tunnel Mill Center for Crafts. So if, if you don't know who Tom Latne is, you should, you're missing out on his work. I'll put a link to his website down below. He's got class schedules and things like that. I I would love to see his classes booked out with people. Uh, he is a smith that's well worth it in my opinion and I've done a lot of apprenticeships and internships with him so I can highly recommend him. So this was a fun project I did in class, learned a bunch of different techniques and kind of thought processes and the way to work out certain problems which is a great thing to learn from class. And we have one singular problem we're going to try to take care of today in this video. Obviously, I don't want to just have a screw into my wall or just some peg or a basic hook to hang such a beautiful item from. So what I want to do is I want to make something that resembles this motif of the scroll work that you see down here. I want to resemble this. I want to take this motif and turn it into something up here to actually hang it from. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. That's what I'm going to work towards. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And as always, thank you for your subscription. Thank you for all the support from all of my lovely channel members. God bless you all and uh, let's get into it.
Okay, and there you go, folks. Um, that is the end of this video. That is the completion of this decorative wall hook that I've made for that uh, adjustable trammel candle holder that I had made during a Tom Latin A class here recently at a place called Tunnel Mill. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful class, um, and I really just wanted to take the knowledge that I gathered during the class and some of those techniques and apply them to this project. A uh, couple of things to note and talk about here real quick is everything in this video as far as sizes and whatnots was all relative. Nothing was really measured out so much other than just made sure that it was the same size. All of the scrolls all started off at 10 inches long and was made from quarter inch round bar that was flattened to three eighths inch wide by eighth inch thick. Um, and you know, that's just some general dimensions and the center portion was made from three eighths inch bar stock to give you kind of an idea where we are going, uh, going with it here. Everything was forge welded and finished by hammer and hand at the anvil. There was no file work, there was nothing um, no arc welds or anything like that in it. It's a completely traditional piece. The final finish of the project was a beeswax finish that you see me put in on the very end. Again, that's a very traditional finish and it makes the ironwork look old, which is kind of what I was going for, um, you know, to take and actually have there. A uh, couple other things to note. Uh, the actual scrolls, they are a taper from the center all the way out to the edge of the scroll. So it gets progressively thinner, even though it looks flat, it gets progressively thinner all the way out to the very end. So this way you can roll up those little fine detail scrolls. Another thing you'll notice in the video, I used a lot of scrolling tongs in this one versus actually trying to roll things by the hammer. In this type of work, there's just too much fussing about to actually try to get your hammer blows in there and you just avoid that altogether and use a pair of pliers to roll up these little tiny thin strip scrolls. Something else you might notice in the video as well, um, they actually, you could manipulate them quite a lot while cold. That is because the grain structure has increased in size because of the high heats that it's been kept at. And so think of it as a way of it kind of like it's been annealed, right? And even though it's down in that black heat range, the, uh, the grain really slips really easy against itself. So it makes it easy to, you know, torque on those even while the strip material is in a black heat. Um, stuff like this, it's not reasonable unless you have a regular hand torch to try to roll things up and keep it all bright yellow hot. Um, a lot of times you can't do that. You just have to heat up in the forge. And all this was done in the coal forge. There wasn't any torches involved. Things I didn't show in the video was drilling the mounting holes. Um, and uh, let's see here. I didn't, I didn't show drilling the mounting holes or the sawing off of the collar that we ended up forge welding on. And yes, it was forge welded on. Uh, you could just take and put a collar around it and crimp it down and call that good. That's a very valid way of doing it. I just wanted to make sure that I had that extra bit of security that it was forge welded in there. So I went ahead and forge welded the collar as well. If you want to undertake a process like this and a project like this, I would say that the most difficult thing in the whole process is trying to keep your work that you've previously completed from burning up in the fire. So real expert heat control is an absolute must. You have got to control where the hottest portion, that center nucleus of your fire is at, at all times and be very mindful of that while you've got the piece in there. Because although the center part that you welded up, that's three eighths, you've got an eighth inch thick strip running into that. And so therefore that could just burn away into oblivion really quick on you. So just be mindful of that um, if you're trying to do a bunch of collective scrolls. Other than that, it's basically just a stacked up weld, what they used to call a faggot weld, but it's just a, it's just a jumped up weld. So three strips, all the same length, welded in the center. Now that's a little different than what I was taught at class because at class we were just going scrolls to one side of the piece versus 
coming out both sides of the piece. And so therefore, um, in, in my approach to this is you forge weld those three in the centers. Now you have three bars that you can then weld together one at a time. Now that is something that I did learn at class was uh, with Tom Latney's approach was to tack weld or jump weld on one half and just tack weld it. Just get it to where it's stuck, get it back in the fire, get your other piece in there, get them up to heat, get them jump welded together, and now you have a much nicer, larger mass that you can work with that you can then forge weld and blend all that together much, much more efficiently than trying to get all of these pieces all on the bar, wire them all up or whatever, and trying to mush them all at once. That's not as handy. There's a lot of welded planes and surfaces that all have to go together, and it's just a lot easier to take it in stages. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and this process. I'm gonna to try to do some more advanced level things like this. I do have a decorative Baroque style door knocker that will be coming out. Um, I'm still working on the whole filming process on that. These videos, to do these type of forging videos, even without tons of explanation, this was a three day filming process just to get this one thing done, this one hook done. So something like a door knocker with a whole bunch of other fe uh, features and pieces and back plates and things like that, it takes a week or two to actually film those. Uh, so you will see interdispersed in the content for those of you that are my regular subscribers and stuff, you will see my blank videos and some other, you know, more beginner levels type stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not. And thank you to all the channel members who made this type of content possible right here on YouTube. God bless each and every last one of you out there and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.